What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to simplify rational expressions that have opposite factors. So I'm going to go through just a couple examples, a few examples, starting with this one right here. So here we have x minus 8 on top and on the bottom we have 8 minus x. Okay, so we almost have the exact same thing on the top and the bottom here, right? But it's basically just flipped. Okay, so before we can simplify this, the first thing we have to do is basically flip the two numbers right here. Okay, we have to have the x here and the 8 here. Okay, but let me be clear, we can't just write it as x minus 8. Okay, 8 minus x and x minus 8 are not the same thing, right? Because it's like, what's 5 minus 3? Well, that's equal to 2, right? But what if I flip these and write it as 3 minus 5? Well, that would be equal to negative 2, right? 2 and negative 2 are not the same thing, right? One is positive, one is negative. So it's the same thing here. So if I wanted to flip this, well, let's just take some numbers, some simple numbers for an example right here. 5 minus 3, if I really wanted to flip this, I would have to write it as negative 3 plus 5, okay? Notice how I'm keeping the signs consistent. So here I have a negative 3, so I'm writing negative 3 first. And 5, this is basically a positive 5, right? So that's why I'm writing plus 5 right there. And what's negative 3 plus 5 equal to? Well, that's equal to positive 2, right? So here we get the exact same answer we got here, okay? So that's how you would have to flip this bottom one right here. You'd have to keep the signs consistent. So here we have a negative x. So the bottom right here, we'd have to write it as negative x. And then this is a positive 8, right? So we'd have to put plus 8, okay? So that's how we would change the bottom. And then let's bring in the top right here, x minus 8 x minus 8. Okay, and I'm gonna just move that a little bit. Okay, now we almost have the same thing on the top on the bottom, right? Now we have an x here and an x here and an 8 here and an 8 here, but the signs are different. So the last thing we have to do here is factor out a negative 1 from the bottom. Okay, so then this is gonna be equal to, on top, uh, we're still gonna have x minus 8. And then we're going to factor out a negative 1. And then what's left in our parentheses right here? Well, whenever you factor something out, it's the same thing as dividing. Okay, so it's basically like we're dividing both of these terms right here by negative 1. Okay, so here, negative x divided by negative 1. Well, this negative sign cancels out with this negative 1 down here. So we're just left with this positive x, right? And then here, positive 8 divided by negative 1, that's equal to negative 8, right? So minus 8. Okay, now here you can see we have the same thing on the top as we do on the bottom, right? In parentheses. Here we have x minus 8, and here we have x minus 8. So guess what? We get to cancel those out. Okay, and to be clear here, whenever something cancels out on the top and the bottom, it just reduces down to 1, right? Because it's like saying, what's 5 divided by 5? Oh, I got a 5 on the top and the bottom, so those cancel out, right? But really, 5 divided by 5, that's just equal to 1, right? So same thing over here, x minus 8 divided by x minus 8 these reduce down to just 1, okay? So I can write it as 1 over 1. And then we're just multiplying by this negative 1 on the bottom, right? So times negative 1 on the bottom. Okay, so then we have 1 over 1 times negative 1, that's equal to negative 1, right? And then 1 divided by negative 1, lastly, is equal to negative 1, okay? So then that's your final answer right there. Okay, and this is really significant. This is important, okay? Because whenever you have opposite factors like this, whenever they're basically just flipped from each other, your answer will always be negative 1, okay? Because if I had something like 5y minus 10 divided by, or over, 10 minus 5y, you see how they're flipped, right? This would simply be equal to negative 1. Okay, so now let's just do a couple more examples, but they're going to be easier to solve because now you know whenever you see something like this, right, it's always going to be equal to negative 1. Okay, so here is our next example. 5x minus 25 over 5 minus x. All right, now whenever you're simplifying rational expressions, the first thing you always want to do is factor the top and the bottom as much as possible before you start canceling stuff out, okay? On the first problem, we didn't have anything that we could factor on the top or bottom, right? So we just basically started solving it. But here we can factor the top, right? 5x minus 25. So 5x minus 25, here we can factor out a 5 of both of these terms right here, right? So if we pull out a 5, what's left in our parentheses? Well, again, whenever you factor something out, that's the same thing as dividing. So 5x divided by 5, well, the 5 on top and the bottom, those cancel out. So we're just left with this x, right? And then here, 
we have minus 25 or negative 25 divided by 5, and that's equal to negative 5, right, or minus 5. Okay, and that's going to go over our bottom right here, 5 minus x. Okay, so here, now that we factored the top and the bottom as much as possible, right, now what is this going to reduce down to? Well, as you can see, uh, we have opposite factors here, right? We have an x minus 5 and a 5 minus x. So that is simply going to reduce down to negative 1, okay? So we still have this 5 up here, right? So here we're going to have 5 times negative 1, all right? So what's 5 times negative 1? Well, that's just equal to negative 5, right? So then that would be your answer right here, just negative 5. All right, let's try one last example. Okay, so here we have 14 minus 2x over x squared minus 49, all right? So again, the first thing you want to do is just factor the top and the bottom individually as much as possible, and then we can start canceling stuff out, all right? So 14 minus 2x right here, we can pull out a 2, right? Both of these numbers right here are divisible by 2. So let's factor out a 2, and then what's left in our parentheses right here? Well, again, it's the same thing as dividing by 2, right? So 14 divided by 2, that's equal to 7. And then here, negative 2x divided by 2. Well, negative 2 divided by 2, that would be equal to negative 1. So here we would have negative 1x. Or we could just write it as negative x, right? So cool, the top is factored. Now let's factor the bottom really quick. Now this is a common problem that you should be familiar with, known as a difference of squares. Okay, so you can see x squared, that's a squared term. And here, 49, this is also a squared term, right? So the shortcut way of factoring this is simply taking the square root of each of your terms right here. So the square root of x squared, that would just be x, right? And here, the square root of 49, that's equal to 7, okay? So then the way you can rewrite your factored answer right here would simply be x plus 7 and x minus 7, okay? If you don't remember what a difference of squares is or if you just need a quick review on that, I'll link a video to that in the card above because that helps us factor this. So this is the shortcut way of factoring it, all right? So now that we factored the top and bottom as much as possible, what can we simplify here? Well, again, you might notice we have opposite factors here, right? We have a 7 minus x on top and an x minus 7 on the bottom. So again, that's going to go to negative 1, right? So what do we have left? Well, on top we have a 2, okay, 2. And then on the bottom we have this x plus 7, right? And then we're going to multiply this whole thing by negative 1, right? Because that's what these two factors right here reduce down to. So 2 over x plus 7 times negative 1 is just going to be equal to negative 2 over x plus 7. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out, and I'll see you there.